is happy today? Are you happy? Who is happy today? Somebody see me. Now we are getting somewhere. Who is not happy today? If you are not happy, just feel free and say it. So we are all happy, right? No. Oh, okay. No, that's true. That's true. He says no. But he has a reason. Because today is Christmas. It seems that we are. That's what I'm saying. That's why I want to ask why everybody is so much strong. Mm -hmm. But if it's a party, it's going to jam and rock your head. Feel free. Hmm? And I'm not very. Do you feel shy about each other? Me, I don't feel who you Me, I jump and spring. You know me, right? I jump and spring. You know why? Because I have found what God has given to me. And if you feel the same, I don't care about who is sitting beside you. Second gentle here. Second or all second. Who is the second? Second, second. I'm from. I'm from the show. At all. Who's the second? If you don't separate yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are going to listen to the word of God. Let's pray. By our hands, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. You have done it again, Lord. Because every day you speak to your children. We have come to listen again and learn from you. Because you are the great rabbi who has ever lived and still living. Therefore, we commit our hearts unto you, Lord Jesus. Give us a receptive heart, a heart to receive your word and abide by it. I don't want to speak on my own, Lord Jesus, but use my tongue and my mouth. Let the Spirit of Heaven speak through me to your people, that one day, before they live here, they will change and be transformed. In your likeness. I thank you and I bless you. In your mighty name, I do pray with you. Amen. 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 Did you bring your Bibles? And somebody said, yes, I brought mine, but I brought it. Amen. Amen. As I told you, anytime you see me, take your pen and paper and write something down. Because like uh, Nigerian man will say, like you see me, so you will never see me tomorrow. And uh, God has always gifted me with revelations and teachings. And I hope Peter certain things that are hidden that you might, you might be reading the Bible or but you might not understand it. So, Amen. Amen. I see some people talking. Raise your Bible up. Let's see that. Let's raise your Bible up. Let God see the Bible you have. Not show it to me. Let God see it. I see iPhone. Raise your Bible up. Raise your Bible, sister. What's your name, please? Mercy. Mercy. Mercy, right? Show me some mercy, please, and show me your Bible. One, one, two, three, four. Uh, Alex? James, your Bible, please. Last week I was here, didn't bring a Bible, and I asked you. Okay, raise it up. Let me see. I'm counting them. One, second, okay. It's a tablet, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a tablet? Eight, nine. <laughs> and how many are we here? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have many. Then now we go for the Bible. Is that correct? Nine. You show me your phone. Did you show me your Bible? Last time I told you why you shouldn't put your Bibles on your phone. It's hard there to have it with you when you are in the train, but it's okay. But I'm persuaded so that when you are coming to church, carry preferably a written word. Preferably, please. You know why? So that when a preacher man or a man of God gives you the quotation, you open it, and then there are certain words that jumps up at you, you underline it. And someone said, are those who meditate upon the word of God day and night. And when you reach when you pick out the Bible, you open the verse, you underline, the Spirit of God will speak to you about what you have underlined. But a digital phone, it's difficult to do that. You get me right? Secondly, when you meet somebody outside, you say, you're a Christian, yes. Please, can you open to, for me uh, 1 John 3.16 or John 3.16? And you start, you see, he started from Revelation to open to this side. And that is out. <laughs> and that is out. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. But he started from Revelation coming back this way. Why? Because you are not conversant with this. Are you? Yeah. Really? Yes. Okay. God bless you. But it's advisable to get... This type of Bible. Yeah, let me see yours. Let me see yours. I 
I like this guy. He's a pastor. He's coming. Amen. Amen. Okay. Today, by the grace of God, I'm going to um, give you a gift. Amen. 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 <laughs> it's not by the Lord. He's going to give you a gift. Or somebody is going to receive a gift. Amen. Amen. You know, I always like to ask questions when I'm teaching, right? We are in a Christmas period. And last week, I taught you how Christmas came all about. We are here. Okay. And today, we are celebrating it. Who can tell me what are we celebrating? It's a mercy. The birth of Christ. Let's clap for We are celebrating the birth of Christ. Okay. Why not the birth of Jesus? Why are we not celebrating the birth of Jesus, rather? Jesus is a human and Christ is the spirit. Let's clap for him. This is from Genesis 126. That's where we get this thing from. What place we're doing well. Let me tell you a short story before I proceed. There was a man who was a swerver. Homeless man, right? He slept under bridges and uh, outside the streets on pavements for about 25 to 30 years. And he made friends and families with other people who were living on the street homeless. He didn't have bath for weeks and months, so you can see he'll be smelling. He didn't have a toothbrush to brush his teeth, his hair was unkempt. In the cold he was there, in the rain he was there. For all this while, and one day, a gentleman in a suit, in a limousine, pulled over. He said, I'm looking for Mr. A, for example. Oh, drive down there, he is there. So this man searched through the crowds and found Mr. A. I'm using A as an example, yeah? And then somebody said, there he lies. So he went and he knelt down with the expensive suit. He said, are you Mr. A? He said, yes. Oh, nice to meet you. He shaked his head. He said, no, no, don't shake me. Hug me. With this, he always said, yeah, just hug me. And this swerver, dirty man, hug Mr. B, for example, yeah? And he said, I am your family member. I have come to take you off the street. No, <laughs> this is my family. These are my friends. I've been here for almost 30 years, and I like it here. Oh, what do you mean? This poverty, this stench, this cold, this rainy, this wet place, you like it here? I love it here. Wow. So Mr. B was the brother, actually. Say, our mother is dead. Our grandfather is dead. Our daddy died some few years ago. And a will has been made. And he said, no, he said, our prayers are gone. Our granddaddy is dead. So I'm the only one left. So I have to come <coughs> for you. So please, let's go home. There's my car. Mr. A said, looking at how tattered I am, I don't deserve that car. I won't go with you. So the brother B burst into tears and he began to cry. He said whatever he could say, but Mr. A would not be convinced to go with him. So he said, okay, don't worry. He dipped his hand in his pocket and gave Mr. A an envelope with his name on it. It was the very first time this man had received a parcel or an envelope with his own name on it. He was not old, about 45, 50 ish. But because of the outside living, he looked like 70 years, very old and wretched. So Mr. B left in his seat back to his limousine in tears because his brother refused to come with him. And he left. Okay. Time passed. Mr. A was sick. And before then, everyone he met, look at my envelope. I've received an envelope from my daddy who died some years ago. It's my own envelope with my name on it. I cherish this envelope so much. I love this envelope. Mwah. And he put it back again. Years passed, years passed, years passed. To cut a long story short, he was sick. Rushed to the hospital and he died. So when they were removing his clothes, they found this envelope. Very dirty, half torn into pieces. But they managed to put the pieces together and found out it was a whale that contained beads. And this will and the deed gave Mr. A 
the inheritance to own mansions and estates in the Hollywood. Cars, flash business, about billions of dollars. So the lawyers tried to figure out what they could do. So everything was shifted to the government, to the state, free of charge. You see how it is? Good. What am I trying to teach here? We can accept a gift without receiving it. Did I say you can accept a gift without receiving it? Did Mr. A accepted the gift? Yes. Did he receive it? No. Why? He couldn't do what? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. You are hitting it. Say it again. He didn't open it. Mr. A accepted the gift, the emblem. He didn't receive it. Why? He did not open it. If it were, what would you do? Sorry? He said he suicide. He's already dead. Mr. A was already dead. He couldn't receive it. Likewise, you can go to a program, naming ceremony, birthday parties and stuff. They can give you food. You can accept it without eating it. But you have accepted it. It means you didn't receive it. Most of the time when I go to programs, they share food. I receive mine, but I don't eat it. It's my personal choice. Good. But when it comes to food, I'm he's curious. I don't like salt, I don't like this, I don't like that, so better I don't eat. I said the one I cook myself or my wife cooks. Okay. You can also accept water from somebody without drinking it. You have received it all right, but since you did not experience the water or drinking it, you have not received it. Let's come back home. Does this happen to us? Yes. Most especially, we call ourselves Christians. We have received a package from God, but we have not opened the package. Who has received a gift before? A gift. Everybody has received a gift before your birthday. Good. Imagine that your father, I gave you a box contained iPhone 7S. And you received the box. We are searching it and went home and put it there. You didn't open it. The next time I met you at train station, you have located it three times. The next time I met you in Lady Hartman, you located it three times. The next time I make a train station, hello, hello, the reception is very poor, I can't understand you. The sending was up, my phone can't do what's up. Ah, 2016, you can't do what's up. I don't have the phone. But I give you a box. What am I trying to say? Accepting a gift and without receiving it is painful to the one who gives. That means I have wasted my money for nothing. Do you think next time I'll give it to you again? No. Uh -uh. When you're afraid of that, I'll come and shake hands with you. Uh, God bless you, live longer, and I'm gone. You get nothing from me. Why? You are accepted my gift, but you did not receive it. Amen? Amen. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. The same thing happens to we Christians. But before I go on, let me get to this point. <coughs> Giving is more blessing than receiving. That's why we all know, right? Good. But there's something that you don't know or you have not paid attention to it. Can I have your phone, please? Good. I have here with me. If I want to give a gift to somebody, before the giving completes, what must take place? Receiving. So receiving makes giving complete. So Mr. A uh, got the envelope all right, but he did not receive it. As it. Let's come back home. Hawk said, I have worked with my hands so that I can gain money for myself and to take care of the poor. But I have learned to know that there is much more blessing in giving than in receiving. But when Paul was saying this, he did not complete what he was saying. 